Welcome back to my channel, everyone. Thank you for watching and subscribing. Today's art lesson is about pressure. Ah. This is not about stress, but about how much force you're giving your tools to your paper or canvas or wood or whatever you're using. Um, and learning and identifying how much pressure you're normally placing and do you realize how that's affecting your art? Okay, so let's get started. Today you need some kind of drawing tool. You can actually use any pencil for this. You don't have to have a pencil kit that I'm gonna show you. Um, it would also be good to try out some pencil crayons. So I'm gonna show you a little bit about pressure with pencil crayons as well. Okay, so let's get started with some of the tools that I have and I'll show you. Okay, so in this little kit from last lesson, I was using an HB pencil and that's, most pencils are HB. So if you have, if that's all you have, that's fine. You don't have to go out and buy one of these kits, especially if you're just starting out. But at the same time, if you find one that's maybe a used kit or you find this one on sale, um, go for it. I mean, if that's what you want to get into, but I'm just saying you don't need for this lesson and really for most of what I'm going to teach you, you don't really need uh, a set that has every level, which this one here actually doesn't show all the levels that you can have. But in my other little kit, I have all kinds of different pencils and drawing tools in here and you can see the range. See these little numbers on here. We'll talk about those right there. We'll talk about those in a minute. Okay, so this kit here, you'll notice it has, so this didn't come with the kit, just so you're aware. So these little, what you might call them, so you're probably like, what are those? Unless you're more advanced, I've got some that aren't even sharpened. They say charcoal pencil. So that's charcoal, right? So that's, that's different. We're not going to look at that at the moment. But you can see it does have, and actually these are not in the right order, we have medium, hard, and soft. So you're like probably like wondering what is that too. Um, also here we have, just making sure we're in focus. I have it listed from the higher B levels. Let's make sure we're in focus here. There we go. Um, higher B levels, so 4B, 2B, that's actually B, it's just didn't print properly on there. It's not an R. <laughs> HB. Then you go into 2H and then 4H, 5H. So this is like a number line. You know, you're going the positives and maybe you consider this like the negatives in a way on a number line. Um, if you remember your math. <laughs> so anyways, um, let's look at how they draw. So if I'm keeping maintaining my pressure, so let's just choose an HB because I think most people have an HB pencil lying around but you could use any of the above. So let's start with something that we all do all the time which is write our name. Well I don't know how often we do that anymore but <laughs> you probably still have to write your name fairly frequently. So without thinking about anything just write your name okay this time when you write your name, I want you to write it as light as you can. So pencil's touching, but there's you're not pressing down, just touching. So I'm just maneuvering the pencil around. I'm not pressing down at all. Okay, so very, very light. Hard, hard to read. Okay, this time I want you to press as hard as you can, but without breaking the lead, if you can, <laughs> depending on what pencil you have. You may or may not be able to do that. So as hard as you can, pressing down. Oh, I really don't like pressing like this. It's, it makes me feel almost uncomfortable. <laughs> Okay, so now let's take a quick look at the differences. Okay, so there's a few kinds of differences going on here. So first of all, what stands out versus 
what is hard to read. Secondly, the size. For some reason, when I press really hard, I naturally make the letters bigger. That's just something interesting to take note of. Oh, now the sun's getting covered. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. And this one here, so these two look fairly similar. And then this one's just like big. Here's another thing that it's done. If I turn my page and I just take my pencil The one that I pressed really hard has created a secret message for my next page, which means if I wanted to use the next page, and I'm just going to see if any of the other ones show up. Oh. You see that? I'm just using the side to check. So if you're using a sketchbook and you pressed really, really hard, your next page is going to be affected by the drawing which could be a benefit if you're, you know, wanting that for some reason. Now let's look at the pencils that I had in this gray kit here. So the order here. So now I've written down which ones and I've done a couple things here. So let's take a look. Okay, so I've gone from actually 5H to 8B. So let's mix it up around and this one here is the 8B if you're wondering where that one came from. Okay, so some interesting things that have happened here. So I've tried my best to keep the same level of pressure, so how hard I'm pressing on the paper with each pencil type. Now, look at, here's our HB. Okay, so I did kind of a similar little squiggly line across. As we get higher in the H's, you're getting harder lead. That can be a good or bad thing. One negative I see with the harder lead is it doesn't smudge, but that could be a good thing too if you don't want smudging. It is lighter naturally, and the line is finer. So if you're doing a fine detail, that like hair or something like that, that might be a really good one to use, but it's also very light. So if you don't want it to stand out, that can be a positive thing too. So it makes a kind of a thinner, slightly more subtle, but kind of a stronger line if I bring you closer. Let's bring you right in, right in your face. Oh, is it gonna zoom in? So for each, okay, let's just keep it down. You can, you can see, you can zoom in. <laughs> okay, so we have, I'll use this as a little pointer. So for 5H, you can see it's a nice thin line because as you go down to this, look at the quality of the line. It's almost like a knot, um, almost like a dotted line or textured line and that's not because of anything I did special with the pencil. It's just, it's because it's softer lead. So as you get higher in the Bs, you're softening. The lead is softer and look how it smudges and blends really nicely. So I, you're wondering, I didn't actually explain what these guys are. So these are blending sticks. Okay, so you can see where I used it. Okay, so with a blending stick, you don't have to use your finger to blend. I think it's fine using a finger too, depending on your material, right? Because our finger, or, you know, our hands can absorb things. So that's something to be mindful of, depending on um, what you're using. You might not want that absorbing into your skin. Another thing I've done, so here's all the smudging. So you can create your own chart if you have these kind of pencils, so that when you're, dra when you're drawing and you want a certain effect, Look at your chart and see, oh, like this one had the right smudging effect that I wanted, or I really wanted to smudge a lot, so I'm gonna use this one. Oh, but now I want more detailed lines, so maybe I'll go in HB because it's darker, or I need a lighter line, so I'll go 5H. The other thing that I found interesting is when you're erasing, so if you have your kneadable eraser around or a different eraser, erase this line and see, and I suggest start at the top, come down because this is dark like the softer lead will get on and kind of dirty your eraser that's why i like the kneadable erasers where's my kneadable eraser oh. here it is i want to think i got a hair in it of course if you've seen me you can know that i have lots of hair okay actually that might have been a steven hair 
So a kneadable eraser <clears throat> is what I used. Sorry, I'm like getting all voice getting all goggled up and <laughs> gargled up. Okay, so this as the lead gets harder, I find that it doesn't erase as well. And this remember I've used the same amount of pressure with each one. So this is a really interesting chart, I think, and you can create your own using a different line, whatever you like, whatever, maybe a line that you use in your art or just something fun. Okay, so that's a little chart about that. Let's use our pencil crayons and see, page. see how pressure is gonna help us in our drawing. So let's just make like a little, just make scribble. Don't think about it too much. Just try and hit different areas of your page. There's a little scribble. It's fun to scribble sometimes. And then I have a variety of pencil crayons. Oh, and a fruit to go. <laughs> okay, so I feel like if you're wanting to use pencil crayons, you don't need to get the most expensive, but I do caution not getting the cheapest either because if you get really cheap ones, like, uh, sometimes they come in like an art kit with that has paints and pencil crayons and pastels. Sometimes those pencils, you'll notice like the lead is very, very hard and you cannot use them easily. They don't draw on very well. I'm actually going to see if I have one in here that's, because I did have a kit. Oh, I think this is a, a cheaper one. And I need my pencil sharpener too. Okay, let's have some fun with some pencil crayons. Even if you don't have a lot of colors, it's okay. Now this doesn't have any brand on it. That sometimes is, is a sign too. I like the uh, Prismacolor Scholar or Student. I think it's Student, that's what they call it. It's either Student or Scholar, something like that. I think that's the same difference, but okay, now I've got it here. And I don't know, maybe this one's okay. Whenever I'm coloring something in, like let's say I just want to color this little block that I've chosen. What I like to do is I start with, I start closer to the edge if I want that, um, if I want the look that I'm going for here. And I'll show you. So I start close to my edge where I'm going to make it a bit darker. I'm going to kind of make it look lighter in the middle here. so. Moving my, keep moving my pencil around, sometimes circular motions, sometimes just back and forth, depending on where I'm at. And as I come to the center, my pressure is so light, it's, it's like when I was writing my name and not pressing on my page at all. That's how light, that's why it takes me a long time to color something with pencil crayons also. And then as I get closer to my edge where I want it darker, my pressure increases. That's that's how we do this. If you maintain the same pressure to color a, a, an area, you're gonna find that uh, that really harsh pencil crayon look. <laughs> if you know what I mean, we maybe we've all done it before. I don't know. So what's nice about doing it like this is you can then easily blend other colors. So this one wasn't too too bad but it wasn't great either if I were to oh look it's just breaking you know how you just kind of press really hard I'm not even going in the lines okay so maybe I was exaggerating oh <laughs> and I broke it <laughs> multiple reasons not to do that way now let's find one that is a better quality I like my, oh, I don't know. This one might be a good one. Let's give it a try. Okay, so let's do this spot here. So again, when I'm closer to the edge, I'm okay going darker because I like it kind of like darker in the, on the edges and then highlighting in the center. That's just, if that's the look you're going for, you can do different looks. This is just a way of learning it. So really, really lighten it up because it's a lot easier to go back in and add a little more than it is 
to try and erase if you went too harsh. Okay, so trying to get it in different different movements, a little circular, that kind of thing. Versus let's do one where it's just Again, I don't want to break this pencil. But do you see when I do this, the lines are harder to disappear. You can see those lines kind of in there. And again, I'm putting so much pressure that my next page is going to be affected. Actually, that's two pages down. <laughs> my next page will be affected and we don't want to ruin our <laughs> sketchbook pages. And what else, with another reason I don't like to press this hard is you can't blend another color into that now. But it might be a good effect, like look at how it's the light, it looks like it's kind of coming on here and going onto that. I still don't like pressing that hard, even if I want it to be solid, I would still go maybe a medium and then add another color onto it. So for like this one, let's take a darker. And it's going to be a bit harder now to blend any color onto it because I've already taken up all the space and it doesn't like to go over top that easily once you've pressed really hard. Then what's fun is you don't have to just take blues. I like to mix different colors so with a blue you might go with a purple. And I start with that light, medium to light pressure. Always start lighter because you never know, we might have a pencil crayon color that comes out stronger than you expected. Like that was a little bit strong on this end, but that just means I'll have to go in stronger a bit later. So this is why pressure is really important when you're using tools like pencils, um, pencil crayons. And we'll even look at that when we do some painting work, how that affects, how it affects how our pressure affects our work. So I invite you to practice, maybe with some swirly designs, maybe with a drawing of something, um, just trying different pressures for what kind of look you want. So maybe you maybe you don't have the light coming in the center, maybe it's um, light on one side and coming darker to the other side, right? So practice that and practice the direction that you're using your pencil crayon. And this can help just help you with more awareness as to how much how much weight you're putting on pencils. And and you can use if you're not interested in pencil crayons, do this activity with pencils. Right? So if I have my 8B and I'm trying to and now look I've smudged. So another good idea is when you're drawing Put an, a piece of paper on top here so you don't smudge your side. If you're starting over here or you're going around, right, you can easily smudge. So it's good to have just another page, like just a scrap paper that's clean. Put that down, put your hand on that, and then when you're coloring, you don't wreck the other side like I did, <laughs> right? So look at this 8B one. It just gets on there like crazy. I'm using pretty light pressure actually. And then what's fun with an 8B is blending. And I know today's lesson isn't about blending, but what the hey. Let's try, you can even use a, a brush. If you have a brush that you've designed, like set aside for pencils, I, I wouldn't use this brush for painting with my acrylics or watercolors because it'll be tainted. But, um, this is kind of smaller space. I probably wouldn't use a brush. Use a brush for more delicate, larger, maybe doing a face. See how it kind of, you can just get some of the color and, well, not color, but get some of that lead on there and graphite. These are graphite. Okay, you can take a smaller brush, blend it in. We can take our smudge blending sticks. Blend it in with that. This gives us more control in the blending, I find. And I always like to go back in with my pencil on top of something I've blended. So that's why you want, because you're working it again and again, especially if you 
you're doing multiple methods in an area, it's um, depending on the quality of your paper, you might not be able to do too many things to it without, like before that paper kind of becomes raw. You know, you could kind of erase a bit in the middle if you went a little too wild with your blending. If you go back in, maybe I wouldn't go back in with a 8B, maybe I'd go in with a, let's go in with just a B. And do a similar thing as I was doing with, with these guys over here. And my B can make pretty good lines too. If I'm wanting to add like a detail line in there. Or whatever. Throw in some texture. Play around with the, the tools you have. Test them out to see what they can do for you before you work on a project, maybe a piece for someone, a final copy, whatever it is. Play around, that's what you can use your sketchbook for. Okay, so I hope that you learned something about pressure and that this will help you in your artwork in the future. All right, if you have any suggestions for art lessons that you're interested in, please comment below. And um, if you learned something new or you have any comments, love to hear from you. And until next time, thanks so much.